2023. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, are there any announcements? Nice. It's just it's blank. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I have none. Do you have any with any activities for the 350th? Yes. So there will be the ice cream social on Sunday at 1 o'clock at the Town Common. <laughs> and on June 5th, which I'm sure we'll bring up again, is going to be a uh, master plan update up at Oakholm. Um, more details to be revealed on that. All right. Well, uh, do you want me to approve the warrants? Uh, I was just going to ask you to do that. <laughs> uh, so the warrants are FY 2323 accounts payable $198,682.57, FY 2323 payroll $193,858.87, FY 2323 withholding $30,319.48, FY 2323, it's a couple of errors here, so we're avoiding withholding for $31.89, FY 2323, voiding payroll, $213.36. All right. Kelly, do we need a motion for that? Or Actually, just, you don't need no. a motion for that okay. because it's already signed. He's just reporting on them for All right, you. Thank you. I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything. All right, moving to the agenda, the uh, first item is a permit for the tractor parade uh, for May 27th, 11 o'clock. Um, according to the uh, note from uh, Clarence and the Ag Commission, that's twice around the common. And the permits are right there. Oh, and Beth's folder. There we go. Two of them. Well, one is for the um, parade, and the other is one's for the tractor parade, and the other is for the Memorial oh, Day parade. Yeah, well, uh, you need to need, have a we motion. Need to, we oh. need to approve the signature. We need to approve it first, Brad. So I'll take a motion to uh, grant the uh, to approve the approve the parade. So um, uh, the the Agricultural Commission's tractor parade for May twenty seventh. So moved. Okay, seconded. Uh, any discussion? Nope. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. And then. Uh, all right. That and I'll sign it. And that goes to you, Karen. Sure. All right. And then next, we have a permit for the Memorial Day parade on um, Monday, May 29th at 10 o'clock. And that is the, uh, let's see, yep, the usual route, elementary school down to the cemetery and then back to the common. Uh, so I will. I will take a motion to uh, gr uh, grant that permit. So moved. All right, seconded. Any discussion? Aye. No, no. All right, then all in favor say aye. 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 All right. All right, we are going to pass over the Cultural Council appointment of Bill Simpson. Uh, we will take that up again in June. And then, uh, let's see, so item number four, um, voting to sell 16 Hobbs Ave. <coughs> yeah. Kelly, looking at the value of this property, this looks like an empty lot. It is. It's a, okay. it's a very, very, very thin lot. Mm-hmm. Um, no, wait, I'm sorry, 60. It is. It's a very thin, long lot. Bowling alley style? Yeah. Okay. It's opposite the uh, campground. Right. It's opposite the campground? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes, um, and the reason being is because of the way we got the land, we have to dispose of it following Mass General Law's procurement laws for disposition of land. Mm -hmm. So it needs a vote of the select board to put it into the auction. Okay. And that's, no one has any better use to the land than just selling it's it somewhere? It's literally as wide as this. Literally know. a bowling alley. Yes. The bowling lane. All right. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see. I will take a motion to um, authorize the sale of the uh, property at 16 Hobbs Ave. So moved. All right. Uh, I'll second that. And in, I don't think any more discussion. Nope. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three other signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. This one, I think. Yes. Brad. All right. Next up, we have the subordination agreement for 134 Quaybog Street. Kelly, can you help me out? What are we What are we doing here? So, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has a housing grant whereby residents and usually different towns sign on together as a group. Um, they provide the funding and it's to allow residents to rehab their homes, to get a new septic system, to put a new roof on, mm -hmm. uh, to repair something structural. When they get the, the, the loan or the grant, they agree that while they're living in the house, they don't have to pay it back. But if they refinance or they sell the home, then that money is recaptured. Now that money typically goes back into the program. It's not money that Brookfield ever had. It's not money that Brookfield will have. Mm -hmm. So when somebody refinances, typically the new lien holder asks for the town uh, that holds the lien to subordinate the lien. In this particular instance, Pioneer Valley has presented us with a letter explaining that they feel that it's a safe um, request for you to act up, on, uh, follow up on. It's, you're subordinating close to $30,000 to a, is it 16 or 11? $16,000. $16, mortgage. How much we subordinate? 27000 Roughly 27000 So the original loan, it, the, the value of the loan that needs to be repaid decreases as you live in your home. Okay. So it, it you, originated you it at over thirty, mm -hmm. but you're there at roughly 27 give or take. Okay. Right. So there's a mortgage, 115. They're requesting another 16. And we hold. And we'll be second in line to that. So if you do some quick math, we have it assessed at about 134. Mm -hmm. So ba so basically, we're subordinating our interest to the bank's interest. Correct. In that, if the property's foreclosed and it's sold off at auction, the bank gets paid off first, mm -hmm. and then this loan gets paid off second. And it's not. Maybe. It's not, it's, well, it's not us. It's it's the Pioneer Valley. It's not our money. It never was, if I understood that correctly. That right? is correct. But we have to agree that the loan is subordinate to the bank's interest. Yes. Okay. If you choose to. Okay. Is there, what, what is the down, downside to not subordinating our interest? Is that gonna screw up their refinance? It doesn't look like they're refinancing. It looks like they're taking out a, a home equity loan, but they're not here to address the topic, so I can't say for sure. They're okay, only borrowing enough. 1600. That's not a refinance. Okay. Okay, so they're, new, so they're. They're taking equity out of the property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The value it's, they're it's, saying is 225 Based on an appraisal that they have. Yeah, is the appraisal they have. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, yeah, but fun fundamentally, it's like in terms of the available money, it's the question is how much um, equity do, would the owner retain after um, the what appears to be a $16,000 cash out, or a, home a $16,000 home equity loan. It's like, is there any equity left? And so uh, fundamentally, it's like, if we don't, if we don't need, to, is there any urgency to this, Kelly? It depends who you ask. <laughs> no, of the, course. the homeowner is is extremely um, anxious to get this done, mm -hmm. and has said so in many emails. Mm -hmm. 
whether there's any urgency for you to respond is entirely up to you. Okay. But they, they, the, uh, the requester has um, expressed urgency on the matter, has, has indicated it's urgent to them. Correct. Okay. That's fair. I'm just, uh, it's just, I guess part of me, part of me is thinking that this is a, um, the town did not loan the money, the town is not owed any money by this person. It's like, uh, for in. If they sell the house, the yes. money comes back to the town. But it has to go into a special account so it can be used for a similar project. Okay. So Cindy Thompson just sold her home. Okay. We recouped but roughly nineteen thousand dollars from that sale on a loan of this nature. Okay. Whereas, as an example, at some point in the past, Cindy got a thirty thousand dollar. I don't know what her don't loan know. was. No, I, I, I'm saying, for example, I'm, I'm using a, a a representative number, and that she lived in it long enough that when she sold it, she only had to repay nineteen thousand dollars worth. Correct, and that will roll into our free cash because the program she was in mm -hmm. is closing out. So if it's not requested by the end of this fiscal year or next fiscal year, it rolls into Brookfield's free cash. Okay. So this, this is money that would be paid back to the town? It is, and depending on well, it's so, so, so just, just not simple. <laughs> so can I just yes, can please, please on Beth. this? Okay. <laughs> so you gotta look at it from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. One, if we're we're talking about pure I wanna call it let's call it call it fiscal conservatism versus our obligations from a standpoint of protecting our more at risk residents you know, and having some sort of social responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is a senior. The grant money was there in order to ensure that they have, if I remember, this Are is a septic loan. I think so. I don't know. I don't know Pretty what the nature sure. of the loan was. I know that the, it's the senior housing coordinator who's the one that recommends the subordination, so I'm presuming that oh, the, right. the, that the it's person not always actually. a senior that gets the, the loan. Okay. So I have a, I, I know of a okay. family, a very young family yeah, with young that children that got a new septic system. Right, through this program. Through this program. Okay. So I'm, I can't, I'm not going to so we're So we're not sure, right. Um, so... Here, I mean, my thought is that the only way the person is going to get the loan, which they need for whatever reason that they feel that they need the loan, mm -hmm. right? I don't know that that information's been shared with us. Um, Are we currently first in line we're, even we're to that mortgage? No, we're, we'd be so second we're in, in second. Line. So we're just. Actually, yeah. we would be first in line because she would have gotten that loan after her other mortgage. The 115. Unless no, but we but typically took second any place. second any second mortgage comes in second. Okay, all right. Typically, I mean, then that's probably how it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, typically the primary it goes primary. It, actually, it goes taxes, primary mortgage, secondary mortgage. This turns us into a tertiary, like a tertiary person. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess what's the benefit to delaying this? That's what I'm trying to understand. It's that I I don't know. I'm partially thinking out loud because I'm new to this process and okay. if they well, this never is the first sell time then, we, then the, the loan disappears anyway yeah. we don't get this if they stay in the house we, the loan disappears anyway mm -hmm. so we don't oh. really have a vested interest unless we and we don't know the person's whole financial situation there's a potential that that $16,000 helps the person stay in the house which mm -hmm. then actually mitigates our risk relative to the loan and it was the grant money in the first place fundamentally correct so, um, I don't think we have a vested interest in denying this and putting the homeowner in a tough spot for whatever they need the $16,000 for. Mm -hmm. And the, the lien of our program is already on the books. So the bank, when granting the, the $16,000 supplemental or home equity line of credit, would already know that we have a claim in there. Yes. And therefore, yeah. they would not... Yeah. They would take that into account when thinking if we have to repossess. And the subordination agreement will be recorded as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, that's right. on file. That then, we're at least in line. Yeah. We're, and, and then, we're just and fundamentally, it's like, yeah, and if that $16,000 would put them in negative equity, the bank wouldn't do that given all the claims on the equity. Correct. All right. Then, 
Now, now that I've thought it through, um, uh, uh, Mr. Clark. Excuse me, could you, you step up to the mic, the please? No. Uh, Jeff Clark, 111 Brunel Avenue. Just to, to let you know, I mean, this is a standard practice in the mortgage industry, but it, it, the only question, as I said, is whether the subordination will, you know, diminish whatever, you know, the, the equity so that if something happens and the whole market goes down, then you We're, could, you could, up, be, you could, you could be losing money at some point of that of that subordination, whatever that amount is. We could, but it wasn't taxpayer. It was taxpayer money in the first place, but it came from a no, no, but I'm just right. ex explaining that. And so mm -hmm. it's a bank's decision whether or not they want to cut their losses and they can get out whole, but anyone else is nailed at the work. end. So that's that's mm -hmm. basically how it works. Okay. No, I th I think I understand it between. I mean, I think I understand where our risk is now, and I'm comfortable with it just because the market would have to go down significantly enough that whatever cushions remaining in the mortgage would be uh, eliminated and then that would eat in and then that would eat into us because we're subordinated so we're yeah. first we're first up for the haircut it, it, and and that's there's there's a lot of things that have to happen for that to trigger and so and given how important this is to the uh, to the people of the town I'm comfortable with it uh, let's see so. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I will take a motion to approve the subordination agreement. Are you making a motion? You have that motion. Okay. He's still running the so, meeting, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, second. All right. Any further discussion? Didn't think so. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. uh, and at Could, this point, should I continue running the meeting, Beth, or can I transfer the, uh, the gavel I, to you? I can, I can take the gavel if you want. All right. Could you please move to the poll hearing? It's eight minutes past. Sure. And the gentleman from National that. Grid is here. Right. Okay, so Thank we're you. gonna we're gonna go ahead and move to the poll hearing. Let's see here. And let's see here, and I have to read something officially. So we're gonna open this meeting as of six twenty nine. And uh, let me go ahead. Do I need to actually read this in its entirety? Okay. So. Um, so the National Grid is uh, asking to install one SO pole on Rice Corner Cross Road beginning at a point approximately 1,000 feet southeast of the center line of the intersection of Old Rice Corner Road and continuing approximately 25 feet in a northern direction. National Grid to install one 35-foot Class 2 pole, number 7-3, across the street and slightly south of pole number seven for new home being built. And they have attached the approximate location on the plan. Do, I, do we have the representative from National Grid? We do. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Mike Masia, National Grid, Worcester, Massachusetts. You pretty much said it all in entirety. Uh, new residential customer looking for service overhead. Um, going in at uh, 14 Rice Corner Cross Road in Brookfield. Uh, the existing in infrastructure that's in place right now is overhead wires on uh, Rice Corner Cross Road. Um, and so really the, the, the cheapest way to serve this customer is overhead to a solely owned pole, 7-3, uh, approximately, uh, Call it 60 feet east uh, on Rice, down Rice, Rice Corner Cross Road. Um, from there on, the customers looking for their secondary service. Again, it's a empty lot where they have just built a house. It's a new residential customer just looking to serve them. Uh, any questions? Do we have any abutters present? that would like to speak to this or that ha has any concerns to express? Mm -hmm. Okay, in the absence of any other objections, can I get a motion to approve the placement of the additional infrastructure to service the new home? You have that motion. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. That's, Thank you guys. We, we're going to go ahead and close the poll hearing as of 6.32. All right. So we had gotten through... Did we get through the tractor parade and the Memorial yep. Day yep. parade? Yep. We, one through five, have been done. We passed over three. Okay. All right. So we've got a cultural council term extension. Uh, there is a um, limit of six years that a person can serve. Um, and we have a member who is asking for an extension in order to continue to support the 350th anniversary uh, with the extension to end on December 31st, 2023. Underneath that, you have an email from the Mass Cultural Council approving the extension from their end. Okay, great. So can I get a motion to approve the extension? You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then she can take a well-deserved year off and come on back. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, great. So can we go ahead and uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from 425 uh, and 518? Uh, you have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that's the end of our scheduled uh, items. We had the budget hearing posted for 6.45. Do we want to take a recess until that time? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So we're going to recess as of 6.34. Reconvening at 6.45? Reconvening at 6.45. If anyone needs a water fountain break or what have you. Tell me when you're ready, Sharon. We're rolling. Don't we need to reconvene the meeting? No, this isn't part of the meeting. Oh, but yes, if you want to, because you didn't close your meeting. So yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll call the I'll call the uh, select board meeting back to order. Thank you, Kelly. Budget presentation, please. Welcome to the budget presentation 2023. This is going to be a brief class in municipal finance 101, or as I like to call it, what the heck do you do with our taxes? First, we educate your children. We protect you from fire. We keep you safe in medical emergencies. We serve and protect the community. We provide clean, safe drinking water. We provide library services. We do road maintenance. We plow the streets. We provide a location to dispose of your rubbish and your recyclables. We provide marriage certificates, birth certificates. We light the night. We take care of those who came before us, and we provide recreation for your children. I'm gonna go over a couple of myths about Proposition Two and a Half, and if you've seen this already, I'm gonna, not going to apologize because this is not an easy subject for a lot of people, and so it's worth going over. One of the myths I hear frequently is proposition two and a half means my taxes can't go up more than two and a half percent. Another one is my property value can't increase more than two and a half percent. This, my friends, is the second biggest lie ever told. This is actually not how proposition two and a half works. The way it really works Proposition two and a half starts with three building blocks. The tax levy, the levy limit, and the levy ceiling. 
The tax levy is a revenue, this is doing really strange things that it shouldn't be, is a revenue a community raises through real and personal property taxes each year when it sets its rate. The tax levy can increase up to the levy limit. This is typically the largest piece of income for a small town, typically. The levy limit is a primary limitation that's Prop 2 and a half actually created. This is a maximum a community can raise in a fiscal given year. However, this is not a stagnant number. The levy limit can increase up to the levy ceiling. So what's the levy ceiling? The levy ceiling is a maximum increase is two and a half percent of the total full fair cash value of a taxable real estate, personal property, commercial and industrial property in the town. So for Brookfield, the maximum taxes we can raise and appropriate above and beyond what the actual budget is, is $9,507,478, give or take. Currently our raise and appropriate is roughly 6,481,000. But wait, can the levy ceiling be changed? Absolutely, because this is a government program. The three boxes that are created have to nest inside of each other, but because the levy ceiling is based on taxable real personal and real and personal property, if the value goes up or down, you get a big business that comes into town and the value goes up, the levy ceiling can go up. If it value goes down, you lose a big business in town, the levy ceiling can go down. One of the questions I hear often is the tax rate went down, why did my taxes go up? And I apologize for the bouncing because I have no idea why it's doing that. So basically your taxes are based on the real estate market for property. Assessments are based on real estate market when properties sell, Massachusetts assessors are required to use those sales to bring the um, values into line with the fair market value. Hold on one second here. I'm missing a page. Oh, well. They have to use arm's length sales. An arm's length sale is a willing buyer and a willing seller, neither under any compulsion, which means that if you lost your house in a divorce, that sales out the window. If you were forced to sell your house because of a foreclosure, or, you, so, or you're selling a property that you got through probate, those sales are not arm's length sales, therefore they are not counted. So only the real market is actually measured. So if a buyer pays more than the assessed value, you're gonna have a higher value. If the values go up because of the market, the assessments go up. Other things that make your value go up is if you start with this, and then you do alterations to your home, you add a third bedroom, you throw in a half bath, you put in a pool, you decide you want to have fireplaces throughout the house. Any number of additions can add value to your home. So if you start with this, but you change to this, you're going to have a higher bill because your value is going to increase. So let's say the town votes, and I'm gonna use small numbers because they make me comfortable. We need $1,500. We have 10 cookie cutter houses to collect the money from. Everybody's gonna pay $150 because every single house is exactly the same. Now we know in the real world it's not a vacuum so it's not really like that but this is just to demonstrate how it works. If you want to dilute or disperse your taxes, you need to have a broader tax base. So if you vote to collect $1,500, because that's what your operating budget is or your overall town budget is, but you have 15 pieces of property that are identical, now everybody's only paying $100 each. So if you have smart growth in your town and you have, you encourage businesses to come in, those businesses bring in revenue and they dilute the tax base for the residents. 
Now when we look at the budget, how the budget works, we have the money that's needed. This is the operating budget. That's what we vote at town meeting, plus debt exclusions, plus overrides, things that we are allowed to raise on the recap sheet, such as tax title, snow and ice deficit, the overlay. I don't know if, does everybody know what an overlay is? Do you want to know what an overlay is? Because I don't have to tell you. <laughs> What's an overlay? <laughs> The overlay is the account that we're required by Mass General Law to hold money aside for so that we can cover the cost of abatements. When somebody files for an abatement, we have to have the money to pay that. So we're required to keep a percentage of what our values and our taxes are put aside so that we can make sure that we have the money to cover any abatements. And abatements roll from year to year, so you can have three abatements for three consecutive years that are going to be determined by the appellate tax board. The way municipal finance works, we cannot roll money from year to year unless it's got a special rule. The overlay is that special rule. We put a little bit of money in each year and we have a cumulative amount so that those three abatements, even though they come out of three different fiscal years, can be paid at once. Then we have charges and offsets from the state cherry sheet. These are all the things that we need to have the operating budget to, to bring into the town. Money that we get from the town offsets the money that we need to spend. So we have general government income from the Commonwealth. That's commonly referred to as the cherry sheet. The um, state gives the towns and the schools certain amounts of, of money. We have free cash. Free cash should be and is generally used for capital expenditures so that we don't need to raise and appropriate for things that are going to last for a long time and are going to be very expensive. We use the free cash to pay for those things so that we don't have to pay for it out of the tax dollars. Other revenues are fees, permits, water charges, ambulance charges. In Brookfield's instance, the ambulance is self-supporting, so those don't come into the overall budget, but they do allow us to have a wonderful ambulance service without any cost to the residents. Um, there are cable and pilot payments. A pilot is a payment in lieu of taxes, so some businesses will, uh, like solar companies, are not taxed the same way or they weren't in the past that other um, businesses are. So rather than paying personal property, taxes on their solar panels, they would pay what is called a pilot payment. And it's supposed to be the equivalent of what the personal property tax is. Not really sure what the point behind that was, but um, that's the way the government decided to do it. So then we have taxes. You can have meals taxes. Some of the towns out in the western part of the state that are, are solely dependent on their tourism they get a 3% meals tax from all of the restaurants in their towns. Brookfield doesn't happen to have that, but these are just examples. We can also get revenue from the sales of marijuana. We get motor vehicle excise as well. The major parts of Brookfield's operating budget in all budgets for municipalities is the general government, and these are in the order they appear in your warrant and as you have voted them traditionally um, in your town meeting. Public safety, Schools, public works, health and sanitation and special services, culture and recreation, debt and assessments, and the water department. The current federal COLA is 8.7%. The Select Board and Advisory Committee have voted to recommend a 3% cost of living increase, or COLA, if you will, for all town employees. So we're going to go through the general, the, the budget now. The, you're going to see the requested amount, the select board recommended amount, and the advisory committee recommended amounts. I can go through this line by line if you'd like, or we can look at them as a group. If you have any questions about any of the line items, you can ask. How would you like to go forward with this? By group? By group? All right. So here we have the part of the general government. This is just the select board department. Does anybody have any questions on this particular section? The next part I do, it. Kelly. Oh, yes. I got a question on, on, on this, the way the format on this budget is. Uh, how do I know where the increases are from last year? I want to know, 
I'm going to want to know on every line what the increase was last year and how much of an increase we're getting this year, how much it went up. That's actually in the warrant book, which is online already. It's been up for our, over a week. Okay. Maybe two weeks. But that's the actual warrant. This is just presenting the numbers as they're being recommended. So what is going to be at the annual town meeting? At the annual town meeting. What are we going to have for this? Are we going to it have won't the look anything like this. It'll look like the other ones. It'll show 2022 what was voted, 2022 what was spent, 2023 okay. what was voted, 2024 what's requested, and then 2024 what's recommended. Okay, so why are we doing this tonight with the way this is written? I'm a little confused on why this is the way it is tonight. Because this is to tell people what the board <clears throat> is recommending. Okay. Well, why can't you just do, do a basic, like we always do with the regular warrant? That will show it too. Perhaps. All right, so with the town meeting, we're going to have the regular format as we had in the past. Yes. That, okay. Yep. All right, that's a big help. So then we have technology, reserve fund, legal services, accounting, and advisory. This is what technology covers. Our computer maintenance, Civic Plus is our website, Outlook email. Um, I was just asked earlier why our emails were so expensive and that's because every single, well not every single email, the primary emails all have the full office suite. In order to have the office products on the computers, we have to have licenses per computer or per user. This covers both those licenses and the email. Um, we have 3,000 put aside for acquisition. If something decides to crash, break, burn, catch on fire, whatever, um, we'll have, have the ability to replace it up to a certain point. And the security is 5,000 because we are actually being required by the insurance company to upgrade all of our security, our server, um, endpoint detection and response. We need to have a, every single piece of software, every device is going to have a specific piece of software that separate dedicated security company is going to detect and respond any intrusions on malware. Um, then we have the financial software. VADAR is the financial suite. The assessors, the tax collector, the treasurer, and the accountant all use VADAR to speak to each other in their duties. Patriot is the actual assessing program. Harper's is our payroll program. And Permitize is an online permitting program. Chris Callahan, 36 Lake Road. Chris, Can you come to the microphone, please? I have a question. So, Chris Callahan, 36 Lake Road. On the Civic Plus website, where we're paying 3000 is that 3000 just for the hosting? Or is that 3000 for that, that, that Brookfield website that gives, like, the list of um, my government? My government. My town government is a totally different totally website. Different. So yeah. what do we what do we pay when we say Civic Plus website three thousand? What is that? What is that for? For the actual website itself. For so, they they maintain. Well, I add the data to it. So does um, Mike Siri, and Karen. But it covers the actual site. It's not hosting our domain name. It's the actual. They own that product. So we don't we don't own our own domain. We do own our own domain, and that's completely separate from the website. Okay, I'm just confused because, um, I mean, I've, I've been in the I've been in the, the website game since '97. I know that we could have a dedicated server for much less than that. Um, so if you if you pay to have a website built, it's usually like a one-time fee, unless we're paying an installment. Are we paying an installment on that or something? No, it's a it's a um, subscription. We're paying a, we're paying a subscription to the website. Yes, to the website. Okay. All right, that's all I want to know. I think we could do a lot better, though, just let you know, for money-wise. Because, I mean, like I said, we could, if we had our own dedicated server, that would probably cost about 200 bucks a month. And if we, if the town could actually put a server in the town hall. And we now, have a server in the town hall. We do? Yes. Do, what do we pay? And I'm confused on the 3000 then. So, 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 this is a product. Civic Plus is a product. Okay. It is not... Would you like to? Do you know the answer? Um, uh, Mr. Keller, Tom Regan, uh, select board member. Um, 200 bucks a month comes to 2,400, so we're looking at only a $600 a year difference. I think the difference is that this Civic Plus product includes a hosted and 
man content management system to allow non-technical people like um, some of our people in town hall to post information. I think the solution you have where we just have a bare server hosted, we would then need to bring on a webmaster and there'd be different requirements. I'd be happy to talk to you about this, but fundamentally I think given that your suggestion is only $600 different than what's on the budget, this isn't a big, this isn't something that we need to tie up the whole meeting for. And I'm happy to talk to you about it offline. I'm not asking to have the whole meeting, I'm just asking yeah. about one thing about this. Uh, no, about this I understand. Thing. And I wasn't saying that the, the 200, 200 a month, that's 200 a month would be like, like if you're going with emotion, and that includes all the other, all the security and the rest of the stuff. But I'm saying if we already have our server, then, then the, that, that 200 is, is no. moot. No, the, the server is our internal server. We are not going to host our website on the server that also hosts our domain controller. Ain't gonna happen. It's a huge security issue. We we can't do that. Yeah, I, under I understand that part. So, but I mean, Mr. Reagan likes to shoot me down every time I say say something. So let's. Um. Okay. So. Now we have uh, the assessors department, and as you can see, the requests are are fairly uniform. Uh, some of the things you will see when we get a little further down, some of the departments requested more in expenses than is actually being recommended. However, um, that's because if they had an electric bill, we're moving all of the electric payments into one electricity account. Um, and we have, so the treasurer's payroll services, which appeared on all of the tech program, uh, programs and payments were within specific departmental budgets. I've moved them all into a technology budget so that we have transparency and we can, we can watch from year to year what we're actually spending in total. It may not seem like much that the assessor's paying $870 a year for VADAR, but if you look at VADAR's total suite package, it's 13252. But the assessor's portion was only 800. And that, um, that's just an example number. That's not an actual literal number. But that's the purpose behind this, is so that we can see it. So then we have the collector's department, <coughs> the, the treasurer and tax collectors. Uh, that's the tax title, the 15,000. And then the town clerk's department. Elections and registration, total conservation. Planning Board, Board of Appeals. <coughs> then we have the municipal buildings and maintenance. Elect so you can see the electricity here. Um, who would have guessed we paid $52,000 a year for electricity? Because it was in every other department, all the departments had their own electric bills. This is the electricity broken down. We did it by we did all of 2022 and saw exactly what we paid, which is over on, it's the 47,644. Nine months into 2023, we had already paid 34,000 for um, electricity. I then took what the 2023 per month rate was and multiplied it by 12 to come up with what our monthly average cost was for each bill that we get. That came up to 51, 322, 66, but we're recommending 52 for a very small buffer. Hopefully we won't need um, more than that. This is the public safety department. Kelly, I got a question here. Yes? Uh, what, are we get, what, are we, what are we getting from our, our solar field? What are we getting from the solar field money towards the electric? I don't know what the total amount is toward the electric. I know that we pay an exorbitant amount to them for the electric. We pay for those credits. We pay for the electricity that comes out of the solar field. We pay them, they should be, I thought we, they were giving us money. To... They do give us credits, but we pay for those credits. So we pay them, they in turn send that money or credits for that over to the electric company. They reduce the bills by percentages on what's called the Schedule Z. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't tell you what each department's percentage is. Um, and so that 52,000 includes the net metering credit payments plus the electric bills that we pay. Well, somebody must know what we're, what we're making off that field. So you're saying our electric bill is a whole lot higher than 52,000 then? No, that includes both the solar and the, and the electric bills. That includes both payments. 
Yeah. Well, somebody somebody must know what we're, what we're actually getting in for electricity from over there. I mean, are we making any money on that field or not? Absolutely not, no. Oh, we're not making money from that field? No, sir. Well, why is it there? What's going on there? So supposedly we're making 100 grand a year on the place. No, sir, we are not. You know, that's what I was told when I was on the finance board. Yep, and they sold that. The electric, the solar company sold that to almost every single town in the neighborhood. Well, we need to discuss this at another time. Well, the net metering contract is a 20-year contract. Okay, so on to public safety some more. So we have telephone, building total, uh, the building inspector, gas and plumbing. So these are our, our inspector services. Zoning, emergency management, animal control, and a parking clerk for total public safety recommendation of 89-4-725-01. Here is what the school committee has requested. This is up $313,000 from last year, roughly. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Which is roughly 6%. They went up roughly 6%. Your highway total down at the bottom. And you'll see that there, again, the amount of utilities was reduced by the electric bill. This is one of the departments. It's also in the fire and the um, cemetery and the police. Kelly, you want to flip that back again? Sure. Y'all set? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now we're in health and sanitation. So we have the Board of Health, the transfer station. Any questions, anybody? Okay. Council on Aging. Um, I moved the Medicar, I asked Council on Aging to move the cost of the Medicar out of the Medicar because they will not provide us any, Medicar will not provide us any verification that any of the um, Brookfield residents are using it. And to spend $2,000 on a car that nobody uses seems a little ridiculous. So I asked them to take that money and put it into their expense account so that they can provide more programming and without raising their budget. Um, we have the, the library. Um, the library is requesting, the library assistant wages are lower than what the library has actually requested. And you'll see the advisory committee's number is different. That's because they came back to us with a 3% increase, but they created a new position that's going to be on the warrant. And that money for that position was pulled out of the library assistant wages. That happened after the advisory committee had already voted, and so they did not have that information at the time that this was prepared. I believe that's gonna be an amendment on the floor. Is that correct, advisory committee? Yes, if it's voted yes, then. Yeah, okay. So the full amount for the, li the new library, assistant library director is actually in the warrant article in the amount that's requested. Got a question? Yeah, I do. Sure. Hi, Hi, Shelby Hill, Four Lincoln Street Extension. Um, on for in regards to the library, yeah, the total library requested it says two hundred and eleven thousand eight hundred and ninety fifty two. Mm -hmm. But when you add up those, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything because when you add up those, the information that's there, it doesn't equal that. So is there something I? No, you're absolutely right. Okay. It doesn't equal that, and the reason that it so you added the 72 all the way down? Correct. Okay. So it doesn't equal that because when I did the spreadsheet, mm -hmm. this is not an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't actually recalculate the math. 
Okay. So when I plugged in the amount for the library assistant wages at the 3%, mm -hmm. I did not recalculate that total. Okay. I missed that when I, just, I, did, when I did the spreadsheet. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to clarify because I was like, I'm pretty confident we didn't do that this year. Okay. So that's what That I was thought. your original ask, okay. I believe. Okay. All right. Any, any other questions um, or comments? No. No. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Then we have the Historical Commission, 18 Common Street, the difference between what they asked for and expenses and what they're being recommended is the electric bill, which is now in the electric account, so they're still actually gonna have the money to pay the bill. Now we come to debts and assessments. This one bounced up, but we were required under the law to go out for permanent borrowing for the police station. That having been done, we needed to issue a bond um, in order to make the bond tempting or worth bidding on. We included the fire truck, which also would, needed, would have needed to have been permanent borrowing. By having permanent borrowing, we save the annual rollover costs and closing costs um, that, that are associated with, with rolling over debt every year. Um, we're hoping to pay off 18 Common Street using free cash. Worcester County Retirement, Unemployment Insurance, um, Group Health and Life, these all went up considerably. The total, I believe, debt and assessment went up 140000 So here's our total debt and assessment. Here's the water department, and the difference you see is, again, the electric bill. So your total FY operating budget requests the operating budget, if it's voted exactly in the condition it's in. Um, and again, I didn't change the top, no, I love seeing these things while I'm doing the presentation. Uh, is what the sec selectmen are recommending should equal what the advisory is going to be recommending if they make the amendments on the floor that they had discussed with us previously. It's a total of $9,966,177.99, which is an increase of $537,029.99 from last year. There are three warrant articles that are not citizens' petitions that will affect the total budget. One is for 568.50 to continue to do the plantings around the um, common that had been donated in the past and the uh, group doesn't feel they can support that financially so they've asked for the funding. There's a $42,000 for the assistant library director position um, and then there's an article to see if the town would be willing to pay longevity for the employees. It would be a total of 13,100. It does not include the police and the library director because that is part of their operating budget. They're, if their operating budget is voted the way it sits, they will get their longevity. It's part of their um, contract, contracts. So this would be in addition to whatever longevity is included for those departments. And then I put a breakdown of how many people qualify in each category. And there you go. That's the end. Are there any questions? Does anybody want to? Any comments? I got a question, Kelly. Hi. I didn't see, um, I maybe I overlooked it. Where, where is the, the amount of dollars and cents for cutting trees in this town. Ah, that is on, hold on, one moment please. <clears throat> See what page it is. Nope. <clears throat> mm. oh, where it was, there it goes, right there. Tree warden expenses, 12,400, and then shade trees to put in new trees. We allocate, we've got $60,000 somewhere in the budget for cutting trees. We allocated that last year. What is it? So, is that, is that correct or not correct? We did allocate roughly $60,000. Uh, 15 of that has been spent to date. 
we just went out for a tree bid um, and we're so we're anticipating and some of these big trees can take up to three thousand dollars to have them removed that that because it's a warrant article is going to be continued to be used along with this 12-4 okay now um, I haven't seen any trees cut since last November or October now we put a fourth man on the highway department okay so this does not belong to the highway department anymore well, we have just, a new tree warden yeah hear me out because this is the point I'm gonna make to you right now okay okay first of all we've got an extra man on that highway department okay now the other days the years passed we would hire a guy with a bucket truck experience and knew what he was doing he could bring in his man and himself and the highway department would do all the grunt work okay and to take down a big tree did not cost us anything close to three thousand now you're going out to bid with some big tree companies we're going to get nothing we're going to get nothing for our money and we get a fourth guy in that highway department and we get a good highway department i think i we the um superintendent is a good guy and he's he's learning he's got he's learning still uh but there's a good group of guys and they're not cutting trees i mean they should be out there cutting trees we should not be sending this out to a big tree company that's that's we're gonna piss piss through that money real quick dennis would you like to take <clears throat> this thank you i'd like to introduce you to dennis tucker he's our new tree warden he's a certified arborist and does this for a living yeah, I, I kind of disagree with that comment. Um, tree work is, is extremely dangerous. It has a higher death rate per thousand, uh, more so than police and fire combined. The guys on the highway barn do a great job, but they're, they're not trained in doing tree work. And for the safety and the liability for the town, I think it would be better to hire a professional contractor, which we're working on getting one now. I also believe Ryan and his crew could help with some of the chipping to lower the cost. But as far as taking down trees, I don't think they should be doing that. And we put out a tree bid and we're working on getting a contractor. And I agree, there are a lot of trees in town that need to come down. And we're going to start working on that at the first of the fiscal year. And I got a rebuttal for that. All right. I didn't say that the uh, highway workers took the trees down. If you listen closely to what I said, we hired a professional tree cutter with his helper with a bucket truck and all the insurances. We've been doing this for like 20 years. Well, that, that's what we're doing with the tree bed. Uh, no, what you're going to do is you're going to get a big fancy tree company in here. They're going to do all the work and the highway's not going to do much. Actually, I, the successful bidder is a small company and they had a great rate. Uh, so uh, is the highway going to be involved? <clears throat> they can still be involved in the chipping and cleaning up, yes. Well, that's what they're doing now. They're chipping and they're, they're hauling the logs onto the trucks and the payloaders and they're getting rid of the firewood. That's what they're doing now. I just said you hire a professional guy and the, the other highway guys do all the grunt work on the ground. Which is exactly what we're doing. That's what I'm telling you. That's well, what, what we're hiring is professional guys to do this. Because of the cost of this, I have to follow Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30B, which, in, which is the procurement law. I have to go out to bid. I don't have an option. I'm not okay. breaking the law. You're not asking me to break the law, are you? No, we didn't, we okay, didn't even, I haven't even gotten to, to discussing the law with you yet, Kelly. That hasn't even come up yet with me. What I'm saying is, so what, okay, clarify, when you say you're hiring a tree company, what's that mean? You're going to have two, three big trucks come in here and the highways got, highway guys are going to do nothing? Tell me how that's going to work. When I have the contract, I'll tell you how it's going to work. Well, I think you should, I'm, I'm here at this meeting now, I want to know how it's going to work now because you're going to have to answer this question at the town meeting. So I want to know what's your plans on getting this, this tree company in here. I, I, the, the, the highway guys did not do any of the tree cutting. They did, the, they did all the groundwork. So basically what you're saying, Mr. Holcroft, is that we need to hire somebody who has the insurances, who has the equipment, which is exactly what we're doing. So you're arguing the same point. No, I'm, what I'm trying to clarify with you is are you going to hire like a big company like Northern Tree to come no, in? No, they didn't win the bid. I just told okay, you it was okay. a very small tree company that won. Okay, and, and how many, okay, I'll ask again. Is our highway guys going to be there with the payloader and the trucks and the, and, and the chipper to do the groundwork is what I want to know. Because we save a lot of money when those guys do that. 
and it's been it's been going on and also from what I understand there have not been any trees cut since when November and that's another question okay. why we had a great winter to be doing tree work the highway guys could have been doing that with a, 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 a professional tree company as you say and it didn't get done that's why we have a new tree warden okay so why we have a new tree warden? that's good I appreciate that and he's not taking any pay but no trees got cut since November because we didn't have a contract because we're required to have a contract well it's so okay what month are we in May yes so, so eight months I mean come on that's four but no wait no never mind <laughs> that's a long time I mean what, how long does it take to get how a contract many trees were cut prior to that huh how many trees were cut prior to November before that yeah you'd have to ask the highway superintendent that but I know so, those I know I, I watched them do it I mean I watched them uh, do a lot of trees in one day I mean Allen Road we suffered on Allen Road trees came down during this that cold snap and I had three houses that got frozen up because we had no power because the trees nothing got done okay so what what when you say you're going to hire a tree company i want to know is it a big company coming in with massive I've trucks i've already answered that you're not listening to my answers so i'm not going to yeah you said myself. a small company what's is it okay i mean what's a small company not a big company <laughs> <laughs> good answer so you can't answer that i mean Okay, well, we're I'm arguing gonna, the same thing. I'm we not arguing. I'm trying somebody. to. No, we're talking we shop. We need to hire somebody to come in and cut the trees. We're in the process of hiring somebody to come in and cut the trees. It's not a massive company. It's a very small company. Okay, so a small company is going to come in and they're going to give us a bid three, four thousand per tree. Is that what, is that what you're basically telling me? No, that's not what I'm telling okay, you. Okay, you just told me one tree was going to be three thousand. I said can be upwards of three thousand. Okay. Well, before we hire a guy per day, and they they go and they'd work per day for X number of dollars, and everybody would 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 they'd have you know the whole gang cutting trees. <clears throat> okay, so this is really not a discussion for this particular venue. Well, I I think because I want to get some wanna, clarification you on. You want to discuss a contractual situation that hasn't happened yet. Dollars and cents is is connected to what we're discussing right now. That's what I want to know how it's working. Can. We're going to hire a, a small local contractor, okay. and he's, he's going to pay, we're going to pay him per day for him, his bucket truck, his crew, and his chip truck, and a log truck if need be. So, okay, so yeah. what about, who's the highway? Guy? They, they can work, we can work them in in areas that are appropriate if we're doing, if so, he's got the time. I don't know what Ryan's crews are doing most of the day. I, I'm not, I can coordinate with Ryan. Maybe we can get him and his guys and his chipper out there to lower the cost. And, and also, you mentioned Allen Road. I did work with National Grid, and they are taking 23 trees down along Allen Road, and they've already started. There's, some of them have been removed. Hi, Kelly, uh, Mr. Holcraft. Um, uh, I recommend that uh, we put this on the select board agenda to s discuss the implementation and the action on this. I'd like to keep this. Uh, hearing focused on the budget and the amounts and not on the administration of the contract that is an important matter but I think that this is not the place to discuss that and I think also at a future select board meeting we'll have a uh, we'll have more in Kelly when are we going to have that contract when do you think we'll have that contract signed we just or opened the bids this week we okay. have 30 days to award the bid which is why I'm not giving any numbers because I can't because we don't have everything completely tabulated we have our recommended um, person. We just got the references checked. Um, he has all the requisite insurance and licenses that are required. Okay. So we need to offer the contract and the and the job yeah. to the particular company, but I can't actually right. discuss uh, that until we get to that yeah. point. I, I understand the bids have been open, but it has been awarded, so we're in a delicate time. We are. And so, and one of the things I'd like to, uh, Mr. Holcraft, if you could bring to that meeting what you envision as a reasonable number or a reasonable cost oh, for that work, and so, and then we can, and then we can look at that compared to the budget, and maybe when we look at the numbers, it's going to look good, or maybe you're not going to be happy. It's like. 
until we know the. It's like. It's not a matter if I'm happy. It's a matter of what's best for the town. We got I know. four guys in the highway department. No, no, not I, one tree's been no. cut since November. Okay, and let me let me rephrase. Well, but you're it, not happy because you think it's not good for the town. Is where I'm trying to connect that dot. Yes. We're here tonight, financial. We're but but we're money. we're talking about the budget. We're not, we're not talking about, about the implementation the of the contract. Money. So that's what we're talking it, about. Money. And we're talking about how much money we're setting aside, and we can talk about right. how, that's and we can talk, and we and we can talk about. Yes, and and your and your cons. And you're bringing up how we're, we're, you're concerned this meeting is about how much money we're allocating to the task. All right, so how come there's no money in this budget for tree cutting? That's what I want to know. Why is there, it not in here? There is money. I thought it was $12,400. That's correct. Is it in here? It is. Yeah. Mr. Holcraft, you asked you 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 asked, you asked Kelly to put it on the board. Sure, may, may I have that? No, shade tree was fifteen hundred. Shade tree, 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 tree that was immediately above shade trees. Immediately above shade trees. I will find it for you. I remember public safety tree warden expense twelve thousand four hundred dollars. Right there. Sixty thousand dollars that we allocated. That it's still that is a warrant article, Mr. Holcraft. Okay, so that's going to be you. It's no, no, Mr. Mr. Banish, that is not last year's money. That is a warrant article account which carries over from year to year so the where is this where is the 12,400 is for the operating budget because we have so many trees we think it is prudent to put in money in the operating budget so that the warrant article money will last more years we're pay, we're paying for some of the work this year with the operating budget money and the warrant article money will supplement that and we will do that in future years as we work through this i am very excited that we have dennis as a tree warden here and i think we are going to see some really good things happening especially now that the contract is being put in place so that we can have That's certified all. professionals do the work right. well, we and keep everyone since safe since november so nothing yes. good is happening Mr. Holcraft, we can't change what hasn't happened up to date. We can only move forward, and we're moving forward. Get a contract. We're going to be pissing our money away. I'm a big tree company. All right. Kelly, I think we can move on. Yeah, move on. Well, that was pretty much it. <laughs> so we got to the end, and it said, this is what the budget is. So if nobody has any further questions... Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.